Hi, I'm Mary Memolini, and today we're making a dish that sounds incredible. Pork tenderloin with root vegetables. I can't wait. I love the sizzle of butter melting in a pan. The smell of cinnamon while I'm baking. I need to touch food while it's cooking and of course taste it, even if I can't see it very well. To me, cooking should be fun. That's why I've invited chefs from across Canada who feel the same way I do to cook with me, virtually. Welcome to Dish with Mary. Joining me from his home kitchen in Alberta is Chef Blair Lebsack. He's the owner and executive chef of the award-winning farm-to-table eatery, Range Road. Also the butchery by Range Road, which we're gonna talk about a little later. So Blair, let's start cooking. Where do we begin? Uh, well, I guess, you know, just a brief rundown of what everyone has in front of them now. We have a piece of pork tenderloin, large enough for two servings on a plate, along with a medium-sized bowl of cooked farro and another of root vegetables. So farro is a really nice green, but it's going to carry all the flavors of the sweetness of the root vegetables. The pork tenderloin will start to sear in a cast iron pan and be adding a tablespoon of juniper berries and a tablespoon of sumac. Sumac has that lemony citrus with a touch of floral to it. Uh, and then the juniper berry. Juniper berries I like just because it adds a little bit of fruitiness, which goes really well with pork. And then we're finishing it up with some guanciale or smoked pork jowl. We have some spring onions some garlic and shallots that are gonna be seasonings. So all these things are gonna come together. We'll call this a two pot wonder. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna get started on this pork tenderloin. So we're gonna preheat our pan. Okay, to preheat the pan, are we doing medium low? Yeah, I'd say medium pan. Next. And then now we're just gonna take a little bit. I have some pork fat here. So I'm just gonna take a, a spoon and just brush this on my pork. And then I can just rub it in with my tongs, give it a flip. I don't have pork fat, so I've got canola oil. Is that okay? Canola oil is perfect. I think what we're trying to look for here is just a, a high heat oil. So one that's gonna have a high smoke point. So that's why you're not using one of your fancy extra virgin olive oils. Okay, so a little drizzle and then I'm twisting and I'm just rolling the pork tenderloin within the canola oil on the plate. Yeah, and then now we're just gonna salt it. Don't be too shy with the salt. Do that on both sides and now you're ready to go put this in the pan. Are you ready for that? I am. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I like hearing that sizzle sound. Yeah. And the other thing about cooking pork or, or any protein is don't be afraid to adjust your temperatures. Like sometimes people think that high heat means that they always have to be on high heat. So you can put it on high heat and get a nice little browning on it, but then you can turn it down as well. How I test my pan. What I do is I actually place my hand over top. And if, it, if it's too hot where I have to pull away quickly, then my pan's too hot. That is a fantastic tip. Yes, I agree completely. And we actually use wood burning ovens at the restaurant the stick the hand in and if you know how far you can get your hand into the oven you know what temperature it's at perfect am i flipping yet uh i'm i am rotating and what do you say per side two minutes okay just two minutes okay i've got a question for you why pair the carrots and the parsnips with the pork tenderloin i really like root vegetables again they have a natural sweetness to them and so when you're getting a a really nice carrot, you're pulling out the, the natural sweetness. And I hate just using like sugary glazes and stuff like that. So I always look for natural sweetnesses. So we've got it roasting in the pan. Is it gonna be a complete cook in our pan? Uh, nope, that is, uh, we are just trying to get a nice little sear on this one. And then we're gonna slide it into a preheated oven. We've preheated our ovens to 375 degrees. And again, that will just means that we only have to roast it for about five minutes in the, in the oven. It'll just kind of finish cooking in there. So now I'm going to roll the tenderloin to the final side. And then now we're gonna hit it with this juniper berry and the sumac. Okay, this I'm excited about. I've used sumac, which is that nice lemony like you mentioned. So it's a powder, it's ground. Mm -hmm. And then with the juniper berry, it reminds me of like a peppercorn. So it's the size of like a peppercorn. But when you crush that up, the, it's I almost got like a sweetness from it. Yeah, definitely. Now we're just going to Finish rolling it around in the pan. Uh, so now we're great. We're, we're gonna go into the oven with this. Just uh, finish roasting this in a 375 oven. Okay. See you soon. Is that weird that I talk to my food as it goes into the oven? <laughs> that, it's, very, it's very adorable to talk to your food. <laughs> so there we are, roasting away. And this is the nice thing about a, a a quick family dinner like this is now we can get started because these vegetables are gonna take, you know, an, 
a good amount of time. And then just by the time they're getting halfway cooked, we're gonna be dumping in the farro and then this whole dish can kind of come together, layering in the flavors of onion and garlic. So now we can start preheating our next 10 or 12 inch pan. Okay, am I good to use a nonstick for this? Yeah, yeah, you are, I am as well. And again, I gotta do my heat test. Okay, that's heating up. Uh, so if you want to chop your garlic, because once we start on it, we won't have time to turn our, turn our backs too much on this. So we're just gonna chop our garlic. And of course, I grab the biggest knife to chop one clove of garlic. <laughs> <laughs> this is where preferences are totally um, your call. If you love garlic and you wanna add more garlic than this, you can. If you don't like garlic and you don't wanna add garlic, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I just smashed my garlic to, to peel it. Yep, 100% great way to do it. I just did your test of holding my hand over the pan to check the heat, and I like that. And now I know I'm ready to go. So now we're gonna start the start in the pan. So now we're gonna be going canola oil, pork fat, whatever you wanna do. So oil, vegetables, and then we're gonna let that saute for a few minutes and then add the farro into it. And then we're gonna finish it with shallot and garlic from there. Okay, oil. Oil into the pan. So about what, a tablespoon or so, or? Yeah, a tablespoon and a half. There we go. Just drizzled that in my pan. And now we're gonna throw the carrots in. And again, this is, uh, doesn't have to sear instantly. They do have some natural sugars to them, so you don't want the hottest pan ever. That's why we kind of say medium heat again. Okay, we chopped up two carrots and one parsnip to like a small dice. How big would you say they would be? Half an inch? Yeah, half an inch, quarter inch probably. Mine, I hear it sizzling and I'm happy with how it's going. And we're gonna be reaching in to grab the pork and that pork is gonna start to rest now. Okay, so pull it out. Yeah. Sorry, I was too busy focusing on my vegetables. How does it feel? Does it still have lots of bounce to it? Do you need to cook it a bit longer? Or? No, mine has bounce. Okay, so you can put yours back in the oven then. It should be fairly firm. No, mine is bouncing. Back in? Yeah. And now our, our carrots are sauteing away. A Little bit of color on our carrots, which is bringing out that natural sweetness on there. So it's cooking just beautifully. And now we're gonna add our farro in. I can't hear if they're sizzling or not. Do you have some sizzle in your pan? We're sizzling over here. Okay, I'm gonna put my farro into the pan now. How much farro did we pre-cook here? One cup of farro, which uh, will cook into just over two cups of, of cooked farro. Now with the farro, what I love about it is one, loaded with nutrients, but it mimics rice. Yeah, it's like a wheat berry, so it's the grain of an einkorn flour. I just gave mine a stir. Okay, so we're kind of partway through cooking this farro dish, but we need you to check your pork tenderloin. Oh, yes. That might be done cooking now, so if you can pull that out of the oven. Oh, this smells good. And that pork is gonna start to rest now. Okay. Okay, back to the farro dish. So now we're gonna put in our shallots and our garlic. So the shallot goes into the into the pan, and that's like a nice heaping tablespoon worth. And then now that one clove of garlic is going in, and we're just gonna stir this around. And garlic is always just, you don't put it in first just because it always burns on you, so it's nice to add in at this point. And then now we're going to go in with our chicken stock. How much of this am I pouring in? Quarter cup to half cup of uh, chicken stock. Because we do want this end dish to be, you know, what I call fairly loose, where it's absorbed, but still fairly loose. Now we're gonna have to taste this as we go for salt. Oh, I need salt. So we're gonna hit it with probably about two teaspoons of salt right now. Okay. And then now we're gonna add just a half teaspoon of the, of the silk chili flakes or whatever kind of spice that you want in there just for a little touch of heat. I just sprinkled mine over top. Okay, and now we're just gonna finish it with our butter, spring onion, and our herbs are all just gonna finish this dish off now. Okay, butter, how much butter are we using? So the butter, I said half a stick. A pound of butter would be cut into four sticks. So that's a quarter pound, so an eighth of a pound of butter in okay. my quick math. And so now we have the, the green onion and the butter stirred in there. And then now I'm just gonna finish it with the chopped herbs. And the chopped herbs came out to kind of one nice tablespoon of chopped herbs. And that was parsley and thyme that we used in this recipe. A lot of herbs are really nice with this. Uh, so kind of your, your call as to what you want to add into it. 
Yeah, I love herbs. Mm -hmm. And everything is good. I'm happy with mine. I'm going to turn off the heat. I'm good. In the recipe, we said let it rest for eight minutes, the pork. Letting your meat rest is really important because now it's kind of absorbing those juices back into it. Um, if you cook it when it's really hot, all the juices are flowing too much and they just then go all over your cutting board rather than onto where you really want them, which is left in the meat. So we should let it rest a little while longer. You got it. It's starting to smell amazing in here. When we return, we'll get to hear more about Chef Blair. You're watching Dish with Mary. Welcome back to Dish with Mary. While our pork is resting, I'd like to learn more about you, Blair. So where did your passion for food come from? Uh, I've always had a passion for food. Definitely my earliest memories kind of revolve around food. I remember like I was born on a farm, so I remember, you know, making ice cream where my mom would make me churn the ice cream. You know, we would get milk, set it on the counter so that the cream would separate to the top. So very early memories of food and that always led me into the, the food world. But it was definitely the kitchen that evolved all of that because the kitchen is a really exciting place. And I think when you see the possibilities that you can do with restaurants, with food service and all the different aspects of it, I think that's where you're, you can see the creativity, your imagination starts to fly. And I think that's just where my career started from was knowing that wherever I was, didn't mean that that's all you were ever going to do with food. You could see the possibilities and like, and then going going further, like owning my own restaurant and and now a butcher shop and those sort of things were just the evolution of it. So, becoming a chef was it something that you always wanted or always thought you would you would do? As a young person, I think I I always did think I was going to be you know some sort of you know fireman or astronaut or something like that so it definitely wasn't one of my one of my young passions by any by any means but I think as soon as I uh, as soon as I started to you know dine out I did know that I had a I really loved restaurants I knew that I loved food that sort of thing so um, from that point on then I then I could see myself you know getting into it and that's kind of how it all started was like I, I have this like urge to go and do it so I need to just like hop into it and see what happens and I just loved it right from the very beginning. Okay, so let's talk about your own restaurant, Range Road. Yeah, so Range Road, you know, to us, Caitlin and I started this and from there, uh, we started actually just doing farm dinners and it was to kind of get the, get the word out there that we were starting a farm to table restaurant. So before we opened our brick and mortar restaurant, we did just do dinners out on farmer's fields. And so we would invite people out to the, to the farm, we'd sit in the middle of a pasture where the cows were literally walking past us and we would have multi-course dinners in the middle of a farmer's field. And from there, we got to really know our farmers and, and our products and we have great people that work on our team that kind of bring that all together. And we think we have a, a really wonderful blend of what we call kind of that country hospitality um, in the city where we're still trying to be inventive and, and kind of new with the food. So your menu changes regularly, I believe. Yeah, and that is kind of, that's really around the, the basis of our restaurant. So when we started the restaurant, we said farm to table. And what we meant by that was, you know, have farms that raise specific animals for us. We have a couple farms that grow vegetables for us. They ask us what we want to grow for the season, you know, right from our garlic to our onions, to our herbs, you know, everything in between we, we do. We have grain farmers that mill our flour for us and we don't really want to waste anything. We don't want to wreck anything. So everything kind of takes on that personal challenge that, you know, we know John that got us this pharaoh. We know Danny that helped raise this pig. And so um, all those sort of things come in and you and you really focus a lot more when you're using like when everything's kind of a bit more has a personal touch to it and you get to be you know more creative and just make sure that you're using everything makes our restaurant really kind of tick how it is. Okay, using everything. Can we tap into that a little bit? Because I mean, I'm Italian, come from an Italian background. We did Parents always told us, use everything, every part. Yeah, no, and that that's exactly it. Like we're doing everything from juicing vegetables to, you know, doing our own preserves or we'll pickle all our, our own vegetables. And then in the animals, we do everything from use the whole animal. We have an item on the restaurant called questionable bits. And so it allows us to round out everything, be very creative and put out some really wonderful things. So people sometimes don't know that they like beef tongue until we serve it to them in a really wonderful way. And then they're like, oh, I do like beef tongue. Yeah, they tried to sell me on tripe when I was younger. Yeah, tripe, it's a hard sell until, you know, you don't tell someone what it is and they're eating it and then you tell them what it is and it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> depending on how you cook it. <laughs> yeah, depending on how you cook it. We're not inventing anything new here. We're kind of going back to the older 
way of doing things and that is getting in whole animals and figuring out how to you know butcher it the best for your purposes and so that's one new thing is that with the new butcher shop there's retail meat cutting and then there's you know a butcher shop that does things with the whole animal and so for us you know we don't just have one steak on the menu because if we're butchering a side of beef that day uh, for the for the restaurant then we'll have you know everything from strip loins to tenderloins to the merlot all these different cuts of meat and then that allows us that educational time with our customers as well and and the guests that are coming in we tell them what we think the best steak of the day is you know if we're mm -hmm. doing pork we try to do a lot of things that are you know kind of using multiple cuts in a dish so pork tenderloin and pork jowl those sort of things so we're always trying to think of nice combinations and it gives us the opportunity to uh, let people know what our restaurant's all about. I love it. Thanks, Blair. I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. When we return, Chef Blair is going to show us how to plate our dish, and then we can dig in. Stay tuned for more Dish with Mary. We now return to Dish with Mary. We're back with Chef Blair, and it's time to plate our dish. So I'm terrible at plating. Where do we begin? How do we do this? Oh, well, I guess for starters, don't be intimidated by plating. It's just getting the food onto the plate. But we went to all this effort of cooking it. We wanted to make to make it look nice. So now we have the pork tenderloin that is breasted. So when you touch it, it won't feel hot, but that's a good thing because that means that the juices are, are sucked up inside. It should still just be warm. I don't remember what we cooked was two portions. So now you're basically cutting this into equal slices. If you're getting four slices per person or five slices per person, you're just gonna cut that and start, you know, a nice quarter inch half inch thick so i'm slicing mine and do we want like a little pink in it we do want pink in it yay definitely want pink in it yay and then what we want to do is we want to take our our farrow and we're going to put that kind of a nice heaping spoon of it in the center of our plate again we kind of cooked this recipe for two people so we want a, a nice heaping spoon because it's going to go into the center of the plate and then we're just going to take the back of our spoon and just spoon it around the outside. So the farro has all of the flavor and root vegetables and it has a little bit of sauce running out of it and, and everything. And so it's just exactly like you're doing and that's, that's a great amount. And then you're just going to kind of flatten that out on the plate. Just spreading it, I guess it's the inner circle of the plate. Inner circle of the plate, yeah. Okay. And then we're just going to lay, now we're just going to lay the pork down flat around the plate. So depending on how many slices you got per person, I have four slices. Okay. And four, four pieces, right? Yeah. And then just equally spaced out so it kind of makes it all the way around the plate. And then now the guanciale or in my case, the smoked pork jowl. Now, I want to talk about this, the guanciale and the smoked pork jowl. What's the difference between the two? Uh, well, guanciale is a cured product, so it just takes longer, you know, has a, so it'll have, it'll have a touch different feel, it'll be a little bit, a little bit firmer and touch, maybe a touch saltier, whereas mine, the smoked pork jowl has a light cure on it and then we, and then we've smoked it to temperature. So again, a bit more smokiness from the one that I'm using, but again, pretty similar. And again, it reminds me like a consistency of bacon, but sliced really thin. Yeah, sliced really thin. And now we're just going to take some of our greens. I know, and yours are so pretty. You've got, what do you have as, as your greens? I just have arugula. So I have mustard greens, so I have scarlet frills. I have some miner's lettuce. I have red vein sorrel on mine. And then I have some of the begonia flowers. And from there, we're just kind of layering these in between again. Okay, so I'm trying to follow you. I've just put my arugula just randomly on top of all the pork tenderloin medallions. Yeah. And then we have the shallots, which is half of a shallot cut into thinly sliced rings. And then it's just a few of those on there. So I'm just sprinkling my thinly sliced shallots over top. And I say thinly because I'm so proud as to how thin I got them. Yeah. Tooting my own horn. <laughs> and there we are. We are, we are done. We're done. Okay, we get to enjoy. We should probably enjoy this with a glass of wine. I would love that. <laughs> Okay, well, I actually have someone that knows wine very well here with me. My wife, Caitlin Fulton, is here to talk about some wine. Okay. Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. Good. So today, um, for a wine pairing, we chose a Canadian Cabernet Franc. Um, Cabernet Franc is a great, underappreciated grape. 
uh, goes super well with food, pairs with a variety of dishes, and it is the grandparent grape to Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, and just needs a little more appreciation, I think. And pairs well with pork. Pairs very well with pork. So should I go ahead and pour mine as well? I think so. Okay. Well, cheers. 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 Oh, wait. Before I let you both go, let's have a taste of the dish. Okay. I'm trying to grab a little bit of everything here. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. So good. Worked out well. Mm-hmm. And simple to bake. Thank you so much. It was lovely meeting you both, and thank you for cooking with me. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having us. Cheers. For today's full recipe, visit our website at ami.ca forward slash dish. Host, Mary Mamaliti. Guest chef, Blair Lebsack. Executive producer, Michelle Dudis. Producer, Lance Corbett. Directors of photography, Brian Roy. Kelly Wolfert. Camera assistants, Gavin Lee, Braden Rook. Sound recordists, Phil Dransfeld. Mike Bonson. Editor and technical producer, Patrick Kelly. Editor and production assistant, Miriam Bakhtiar. Graphics, Mike Smith. Media accessibility specialist, Simone Cupid. Audio post, Mike Monson. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.